I seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the accursed enemy of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. I hope by the grace of Allah Almighty all acts conducted by you dear ladies and gentlemen will be accepted and may our Savior Imam Mahdi may Allah hasten his reappearance Bless us all. And also Lady Fatima Masuma, peace be upon her. Intercede for all our needs in this world and the hereafter. It is mentioned in Holy Quran and who has done an atom's way of good shall see it. And he who has done an atom's way of evil shall see it. The results of whatever good deeds that anyone does in this world will return to him or her both in this world and in the hereafter. And the results of whatever bad deeds that anyone does will also return to him or her both in this world and the hereafter. One of the scholars has tried to depict both his life in this world and his life after death for us in the form of a story. We have all seen this world and whatever is, everyone has seen it according to his capacity. All of us have seen the change of seasons, have experienced pleasures and adversities, have felt hunger and good meals. And have enjoyed family and friends in it. Those who have traveled on earth have seen its seas and oceans and deserts and mountains. But we haven't seen the hereafter. How is the hereafter? How do we depart this world? Those who have departed cannot talk to us and tell us about that. Some might just happen to have a dream about them. This scholar depicted the hereafter based on the verses of the Holy Quran and narrations of the Ahlul Bayt. Since Allah Almighty is He who really know the hereafter would be like, and the infallible Imams know that what hereafter is exactly like. According to Holy Quran and the statements of our infallible Imams, this scholar has tried to depict everything. From the moment he supposedly dies to his funeral ablutions to the time after he is put inside the grave, here is a part of his story. He writes, they put me in the grave, sealed it. All my relatives and friends left me alone in there. I was completely alone there. Suddenly, a person entered my grave. He was so beautiful and he smelled so good and was so well-mannered. I was so happy that he was there with me. 
I had never seen anyone as kind as him during my lifetime. I felt like I was in heaven with him. Then I asked him, who are you? The answer, I'm result of your good deeds you did this in the world. When you helped the poor, solved someone's problem, behaved well with people around you, read the whole account, said prayers, fasted, had good behavior towards your family and relatives and neighbors. I'm the result of your good deeds. These good deeds have been recorded and led to my creation. Whenever you need me, I'm at your service. As he left me another, creature appeared in my grave while I was so lonely and isolated. This one was so ugly and it stunk so terribly and was so ill-behaved that I felt a great sorrow in my heart. I had never seen a creature worse than this in my whole entire life. I had seen lots of bad things in the world, but none of them was worse than this. I asked him who he was, and he answered, I'm the result of your bad deeds in the world. Your bad deeds had been recorded and led to my creation. All you did to the others from backbiting, cheating, cursing, and oppressing. Have all added up and led to my creation. I'm your companion and will stay along with you. Then he left me alone. Both the good and the bad creature used to visit me every now and then. So whenever that beautiful creature visited me, he helped me in problems and difficulties I had. And always lifted spirits and gave me hope. However, when the ugly creature came, apart from that I felt sick of his face and I was scared of him, it despaired me as far as it could. Whenever I had any problem, he used to tell me that I was never to survive those problems and would never be saved and I was going to end up in hell finally. He kept teasing me as far as he could. In another part of his story, this scholar says, I was once hungry and I did not have anything to eat. He after similar to this world with a small changes. There we taste the result of our deeds, and all our deeds are magnified and bold. One small good deed corresponds to huge amounts of rewards there. One small bad deed will also inflict you there. This scholar goes on, I was really hungry, I had nothing to eat, and I did not know what to do. Suddenly that beautiful creature appeared and came to me. I asked him where he had been, and that I was upset that he had not came. He asked me what my problem was, and I said I was really hungry. He thought for a little while. I was waiting, your problem have now been solved, he said, for tonight is Thursday night, and your family members are going to pay charity for you at your home. These charities will be sent to you in the hereafter, so go up there and receive your food. I went home to receive the charities in the form of food. 
it has mentioned in the narrations, all our deceased family members, our deceased father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, aunt, uncle, it has been mentioned in the narration, the deceased come to us on Thursday night at dusk. And we'll be waiting for you to send them gifts in the form of charity. Pray for your late and even for a minute. And pray for her forgiveness. Do the same for your grandfather, grandmothers, and others. Recite one surah of the Holy Quran for all of them. They will come down waiting for you to send them gifts in the form of a charity. This is something happens to us. So he continues, I went home, faced with many f people, including family members, friends, relatives, and neighbors, and prepared different kinds of foods and fruits in a ceremony to commemorate me. I saw that these charities, so I reached out to grab them, but I could not get my hands on any of them. I literally could not get any of those charities. So even more upset than I was before, I came back to my grave. No sooner had I entered my grave, I smelled something with an exceedingly great pleasant smell. I looked around and there was a basket full of apples. Such like apples that I had never seen in my entire life. I was so hungry and I wanted to eat some of those delicious apples. In fact, this person was a virtuous good scholar and also with few sins. Due to extremity of my hunger, I wanted to eat some of them. But then I thought, I do not know whose those apples are and that he might not allow me to eat his apples. So I was really puzzled and I did not know what to do. The pleasant smell and attractive color of the basket of apples that made me dizzy, and my temptations and desires that made my mind busy, were arguing and struggling about to eat and not to eat, And then the beautiful creature appeared. I asked him where he had been, and I told him that they paid some charity, but I couldn't grab any of them. He told me not to be upset and to eat those apples there. I said I wanted to eat them, but I did not know whose apples they were, and whether I was allowed to eat them or not. He said you must know that this is your grave, and nothing is brought here unless it is meant for you. These apples are for you. So I took a few of those apples and ate them. I had never eaten anything more delicious before in my life. When I was finally full, I asked him why I could not receive my charity. He said, do you know why you couldn't get any of your charity? Yes, answered, you yourself had told me to go there and get some of the charities that are in the form of food for me. There were the charities you talked about, I could get none of them. I saw the charities going up and I tried to grab them, but I couldn't. He said, the reason that you could not get any of those charities was because your family was praying those charities, not because of you, but because of themselves. They had invited those people to show off or return their favors, or they had not invited some of or they had some problems with, or they had not invited any poor just because of the good of it. 
They were thinking the whole time about how to cook the food. As you can see, none of these charities had really been for you. They did not really mean to send you those charities. All these are mentioned in Holy Quran and narrations that this scholar has depicted them in the form of a story. I asked him, where have these apples come from? He answered, do you remember once you visited Imam Hussein's Hala Shrine in Karbala? In fact, he's retelling the journey he had to Karbala. You went there, made a pilgrimage, said prayers, and read Ziyarat for Ali Akbar, Imam Hussein's son. While you were reading Ziyarat for Ali Akbar, you were not paying any attention to the people around. You were thinking about the tragedies that Ali Akbar went through, and you were cursing his killers. From what you had read in the history books, you remembered those tragedies and then started to cry. Do you remember that? I said yes. Now this basket of apples is a gift from Ali Akbar. It is returned from that ziyarat you read that day. As you can see, nothing in this world is lost or wasted. Everything is calculated and measured and then returned to you. Good or bad, small or big, both in this world and the hereafter. He who has lived for 20 years in this world like this, why he has so many problems in this world? The same is true for the person who is 60, 50, 40, 30 years old. The most one can live in this world is 100 years. If you compare 100 years with the hereafter, it won't be even one million of it. This means if we split the hereafter into one million section, every section is longer than 100 years. How long is the hereafter? How many hundred years and thousand years is the hereafter? As the Quran explains, humans live there forever, which means there is no end to life in the hereafter. The results of deeds will return to you both in this world and the hereafter. It has mentioned in an Arishan that if a woman tolerates her ill-mannered husband, even if her husband is also a good person, she enters the heaven before her husband. He will be kept at the gates of heaven for his wife to enter first and then he will be judged for his behavior. On the other hand, if a man tolerates his ill-mannered wife and tolerates all her naggings, this is called clemency for he can return her bad behavior and does not behave badly with her wife. In the day of judgment, if both deserves a house in heaven, and if his wife had been a good person and performed all her religious obligatory duties, the clement man enters the heaven before his wife, and the wife will be kept at the gates of the heaven. There is true about two brothers, sisters, parents, Parents, partners, teachers, and students.
and a thing you will do will return to you someday. Look how amazing example has Allah Almighty given in the Quran in this regard. An example that you have never thought about it. You all have seen that sometimes when you are in a room and when the sky is clear and it is sunny and when there is an aperture in a wall or ceiling as small as your little finger a beam of sunlight pours into the dark room from this aperture. When you look at this beam of light coming from the aperture, you can see billions of particles floating in the air. And these particles are made by parts called atoms. And now there are billions of atoms here in this room, but your eyes can't see it. Under direct sunshine, it can't be seen either, but when there is only a small bee pouring in, we can see them floating. Well, you can hardly see these with naked eyes, for they are very small. However, Allah Almighty states is not about the mass of an atom. He states an atom's weight in the Holy Quran. So, he who has done an atom's weight, who knows the weight of these atoms? Is it one gram? No, thousands, millions, and billions of these wouldn't be one gram. Suppose a room with only a narrow aperture through which the beam of light pours in, you will see these atoms floating as a result of friction against air. They are so light and in fact weightless. Our Quran insists on its weight. I do not know how many thousand or millions of these atoms would be one gram. Allah Almighty has said that the result of the tiniest good or bad deed, as heavy as one of these atoms, will return to the doer of the deed. What does it mean? It means that if one happens to see a grain of rice on the ground and you pick that up, you put it somewhere else where a bird or an ant can come and take it. This is the best example given by Allah Almighty. An atom's weight of good deed will return to the doer of the deed, and you will see its result later. An atom weight of bad deed will return to the doer, either you have to expect it. I hope that for the sake of Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance today, which is Friday, and belongs to him. Allah Almighty would bless us all his favors. And the insight and vision to approximate to good and to keep away from evil. May Allah bless Muhammad and his pure descendants.